Uh, I had a hobby too. Mine happened to be guns and ballistics. And I studied guns and ballistics as much as I could and I wrote an article it was about high velocity. So out of all my years working at Weatherby, the last five have been some of the most exciting. Working with Adam, with him running the company. And to think that I get the opportunity of carrying on my grandfather's legacy 75 years later here in Sheridan, Wyoming, I mean, it really is a dream come true. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. All right, welcome to On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. I'm here with Adam Weatherby, and this is Zachary Hine, Director of Marketing for Weatherby. Uh, talking about one of the all-time favorites in the, the Weatherby cartridge lineup, the 257 Weatherby Magnum. So, um, this one goes way back. It's not quite the oldest cartridge Roy developed, but uh, kind of tell us a little bit of history about uh, this 257, the, the fastest of the quarter bores. Mm. Uh, yeah. The quarter bores. Yeah, you know, the, the cool thing is there's just not a lot of quarter bores. There aren't. Not a lot of guys are shooting a 25 caliber. And so, whereas a lot of cartridges my grandfather developed and we've since developed, there's so many players in the game in the 30 realm and the six and a half and the sevens and, you know, but the 25, we've kind of always been the king of the 25 with the 257. For sure. The yeah. 25s kind of had a – I mean, they were the beginnings of some of the some of the fast, fast cartridges. The, one of the cartridges that was around before ours, uh, the, the 253,000 Savage, the 20, 250 Savage. Everybody shoots that. It was the first yeah. one to break 3,000 feet per second. Uh. So uh, yeah. that, was, that was kind of a it, – it's, it's kind of an interesting uh, cartridge family to be in because that was – one of the first fast cartridges. It was. The funny thing is, though, with that same 87 grain bullet, we're doing 870 feet per second faster. Yeah. So. And I think that's where, I think what 1943 is what we kind of attribute, I think, to the development of the 257, which we were incorporated in 1945. So it was in the Tinker days when my grandpa was, you know, doing that. I think the 270 beat it uh, that he did that first. But again, you know, same parent case. And just to, I know people are going to listen to these cartridge podcasts that we'll be doing, and they'll be of all different levels. And so it's important that we speak to those that don't understand cartridge language that much, that we we call it the parent case would be the same case, but necked up and down. So the neck diameter being larger or smaller, but the rest of the case being the same size. So our 257, 270, and 7 millimeter all being the same parent case, where the 300 family, which also houses the 340 and the 65300, is a longer case, different parent. So in the 257 parent family, it's the most neck down, obviously, and therefore producing the most velocity. And I, and I think that's one of the reasons it just got its popularity was because so much powder, such a small bullet, really what Roy Weatherby was kind of known for in the 257 I think launched it forward because of the velocities. Yeah, this kind of that that was you know if if people don't know that was Roy's bag was was being ultra high velocity, yeah. and in those first cartridges this was the king as far as velocity, and it was Roy's favorite. Yeah, um, and that was th one of the reasons why it was his favorite was he just I think he liked that FPS number, yeah. and so his whole theory of really you know upon injuring an animal you know early on and prior to the development of weatherby his whole thing was uh, you know velocity kills and we got to get bullets moving faster and so his 257 was kind of king of that uh at the time i don't think anybody was hunting with anything faster at the time no no i don't think anything i that would be especially at that time mm -hmm. um this we were far and away, Weatherby cartridges are far and away the fastest. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, um, at the time that this was released, uh, you had the, the 250 3000 Savage we talked mm -hmm. about. That was from 1915. The 257 Roberts, mm -hmm. uh, 1934. Mm -hmm. And then the 25 out 6, which at that time was just a Wildcat like mm -hmm. Weatherby's, uh, yes. like Roy's cartridges were before they became standardized. Right, um, right. And so we've been at the top of the velocity game since 1943 yeah. <laughs> in the 25 caliber. So, so you know, it's just uh, – it's been a great, great round. And so people have just, I think, come to love it. It's always been known affectionately as Roy's favorite cartridge, um, you know, to this day. Um, that, that that's what, you know, what people say was his favorite. And he would say that in settings all the time and in interviews that it was his favorite. And I think that velocity, you know – Probably had a yeah. big part to do with that. Big time, yeah. big time. 
Yep. Yeah. So let's talk about the best game animals uh, for the mm. 257 Weatherby. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a uh, being on the smaller side, but going that fast, it's yeah. highly effective. I mean, this is an amazing antelope cartridge. It is. Um, it's great, obviously, being out here in Wyoming. You know, Zach, you know as well as I do. That, I mean, there's a lot of game here that it's ideal for. So, I mean, you know, uh, you know, when you're poking out there trying to get whether mule deer, an antelope, whatever it is, I mean, it's it's a great out west, um, you know, small smaller big game. In yeah, other words, medium game. yeah. Yep, yep. Although people have certainly used it, you know, in in larger animal settings. When you start to get to the elk or bear, all those things, obviously, somebody wants the the larger larger round, although I've known people to have success with it in that. But it, it certainly is, um, you know, in the antelope, whitetail, mule deer, you know, category-sized game, just a phenomenal round. For sure, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, i kind of poking through some historical documents over here and uh, came across Oh, this a, is a good story. i would never heard this story. One. Yeah, so uh, 1962 Gun Digest, or not Gun Digest, uh, Guns and Ammo, and uh, they were talking about Roy being on safari, and he had he was with a party of, of folks, and uh, they had a, a Cape Buffalo charge one of the guys that was next to him, and what he had in his hands was his 257. And as that buffalo went by to chase the next guy over, he put one round in it, broke its rear hip, and it said when they dis dissected it, it uh, looked like a grenade had gone off inside of it, and it, it died from that one shot of a 257. Mm. And it said in there he would not recommend it for Cape Buffalo, but <laughs> it was the gun he had. So. Oh, man. Yeah, it's stories like that, that that really, you know, put that cartridge on the map. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, 100 grains or 120 max or yeah, whatever. Not, not much, but oh, going bullet. super fast. Yes. Again, disclaimer. We're not saying to use it for Cape Buffalo, <laughs> but this, it, it, it was funny because I came around the corner <laughs> yesterday, if you're listening, and Zach was rummaging through our historical cabinet and apparently came across some cool articles. We have so much cool historical stuff, and I'd never read this article. So. Yeah, no, it, yeah. There, there's a lot of neat stuff in the, in the mm. when you've been around 77 years. I mean, yeah. there's a lot that's been written and a lot that's been done with our, our yeah. guns and cartridges. Yeah, so. yeah. So, yeah, so um, look at kind of the tech specs of this yeah. cartridge. Uh, with a 100 grain bullet doing 3,600 feet per second, um, the the kind of the high end of that with an 87 grain bullet, which we don't load at the moment, but that goes uh, about a little over 3,800, so yeah. 3,870 I think mm -hmm. is the the yeah. speed on an 87 grain. Um, and so yeah, it's basically just a that starting off that 300 H and H, uh, 375 H and H family cartridge, and then neck down, mm -hmm. um, and then given uh, the the kind of trademark double venturi mm -hmm. shoulder to the neck so right. so just a very distinctive shape and kind of the yeah the image of our cartridges that sure were for so long yeah and it's it's been of our you know uh um well soon to be 16 cartridges uh you know that we have it's uh you know i mean it's the 257 and the 300 300 has always been our best seller um obviously just in north america it being so you know, diverse, uh, you know, typically 165 to, you know, upwards of 200 and so 220 that you can get. But beyond the 300, 257, both in our guns and our ammo, has been the, the next best seller. 65, 300 in the past few years has really crept up on it as far as sales. But that 257 has really held its own and been just you. And, and I think one reason it's just been unique in its class. Like I said before, there are so many 65s, a lot of 7s, a lot of 30s. There's just, uh, you know, uh, yep. there's there's not as much in the 25 game at all. Yeah, so. we had we'd kind of talked about some of the other uh -huh. uh, 25s on the market. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only thing recently was the 25 uh, WSSM, mm -hmm. um, which yeah. uh, is still 400 <coughs> feet slower. Sure, um, and the 25 out six has come to be a, a pretty popular round uh, as well. Uh, but again, obviously, 257 being much larger case with a lot more velocity behind it. Yeah, again, another 400 feet per second faster than that 25 yeah. out six, even. So, exactly. So really, yeah. there's just nothing that can compare, especially in that 25 caliber. Yeah. So. Yep. And it is. I mean, it goes. You know, it's a large case. It goes in our magnum action. Um, you know, it's not a little short. You know, thing. I mean, it is. It's. It's a lot of powder uh, that you're burning to get that little 25 caliber bullet out there. But it's. Uh, man, it's effective. It's effective. Yeah, so. excellent. Well, yeah. do you have any uh, personal hunts mm. or family hunts that you want to share kind of to close us out? Oh, sure. A couple. Yeah, maybe. I remember did a really cool, memorable hunt with my dad in 2017. Throw that number out there. Right about that. So about five years ago. Nope. Let's go with 2015. 
<laughs> Sorry, 2015, because I'm like, it was longer ago. We went to Kansas and uh, did a hunt, um, uh, basically where my grandpa grew up within miles, of where he grew up over 100 years ago, um, trapping and shooting crows for farmers, and his love for the outdoor kind of grew up. And along that same creek, uh, several miles away, we went on a, on a whitetail hunt, and uh, we took Mark V Deluxe 257s, and it was just in memory of grandpa yep. and uh went and had a really cool trip together uh, i shot a nice buck he actually wasn't able to weather didn't cooperate wasn't able to pull the trigger but we went down there and and uh, actually went by a, uh, a cemetery went down a dirt road where we thought uh roy grew up as a sharecropper and and uh as a kid and and sure enough, knocked on some neighbors' doors and, and found out kind of where they thought his house would have been that literally wasn't there, you know, just due to the poor construction at the time. And um, so found a lot of that history, uh, went by a cemetery. My dad had, had not been to, it was either ever in a lot of years, uh, where a lot of his relatives uh, were there from both his dad and, and mom's family. And uh, and on that hunt, we both took, a, I believe, if I recall my memory serves me correctly, 257 Mark V Deluxes. Hmm. And it was just uh, in memory of, of Grandpa and a, a really, yeah, just a really special hunt. Um, and, uh, of course, shot the whitetail, one shot, nice buck. Yeah, so, good. Um, good, good. There was that. And then, yeah, you know, last year uh, or the year before, my daughter was going to shoot her first whitetail. She shot a mule deer and an antelope and some different things, hadn't shot a whitetail. And I just thought it would be, again, just uh, I thought it would, I thought it'd be fitting to take a 257. So he grabbed a 257 for her to shoot her first whitetail, and, and she was successful in that hunt as well. So um, it's funny, you know, a lot of that, just because that 257 is kind of that just iconic, you know, classic Weatherby round, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's popular in our family when it's that kind of classic deer hunting time that we would that we would take a 257. Um, and sometimes, you know, in a Woodstock, it's just, you know, especially if it's not something you're going in the backcountry with for days, for um, sure. And stuff like that. It's it's neat to, um, yeah, just be able to take that with you. So I remember her taking her first whitetail with it as well. So, um, and actually, after I moved to Wyoming uh, uh, as a resident, but I was still not a uh, non-resident, but used my tag, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I think cashed in points. My, the first deer I shot uh, here upon moving here as a resident was with 257. So a lot of those just kind of memorable, uh, you know, times like that has been uh, has been with the 257 Weatherby. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, my dad could tell you story after story. We'll have to get him in here for a podcast. We'll have to have him remember what caliber used on every hunt. So, you know, <laughs> he's got some more years uh, <laughs> to tell those stories. <laughs> but, um, but it was neat. Even uh, Brenda, when she went, uh, did her first African safari. Um, she brought a 257 laser mark and so brought the Woodstock, the classic laser mark 257 to shoot her planes game with, you know, the, the ones that were, you know, fitting of that, you know, the size and smaller sizes. And she just, it, there's something about it that it's like, when you want to go classic, you go that, that 257 and, and there's, it's a cult like following the guys who love it really, really like it. I mean, there's, there's nothing else like it out there. So yep. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I think that was a pretty good review of the the 257 Weatherby Magnum. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to continue to to do a few more of these, some of the classics, some of the the big hitters in the in the Weatherby lineup, and kind of give a little bit of a behind the scenes on these cartridges. So, thank All you right. very much. You bet.